We begin with an historic outcome here in Germany. The far-right Alternative for Germany party has won Sunday's election in the eastern state of Thuringia, where it's considered by German intelligence to be an extremist organization that threatens democracy. It's also being investigated at a national level for possible extremism. The party, known as AFD, won just under a third of votes in the state. It vocally opposes military support to Ukraine and wants to prohibit most immigrants. The most recognizable face of Germany's far-right AFD, now Björn Höcke has led a right-wing extremist party to win a regional election for the first time since 1945. An historic victory! The AFD victory in Thuringia deals a devastating blow to Germany's mainstream parties. Of the three in the coalition governing at national level, only the Social Democrats passed the 5% threshold needed to enter parliament. Now Höcke aims to lead the regional government here. We are ready to take on the responsibility of forming a government. It's parliamentary tradition here in Germany that the strongest party invites others to talks. In the coming week, we will hold talks in the party committees, we'll analyze the situation, and then we'll decide to whom we will present the offers of talks. But just who would take up that offer is another question. Other parties have strictly ruled out governing with the AfD, which they see as anti-democratic. In Germany's other regional election in Saxony, the governing conservative CDU may have narrowly fended off the gains made by the AfD to come first there. We all know how disappointed people are with what's happening in Berlin. And the people here in Saxony trusted us. They didn't cast a protest vote. Instead, they gave us this strong result with their support. But it could still face problems. If the current regional alliance fails to secure an absolute majority or to agree a coalition deal, the Conservatives could face the prospect of having to negotiate with the left-wing populist BSW to keep the AFD at bay. The mainstream parties face another challenge in three weeks, when a third Eastern German state Brandenburg also votes for a new parliament. The AfD is leading polls there, but the populist BSW is also a force to be reckoned with. The regional political landscape in the East is becoming increasingly unpredictable. For some analysis now, I'm joined by Dan Huff. He's a professor of politics at the University of Sussex in the United Kingdom with a special focus on German politics. Thank you for joining me. This is the first time that a far-right party has won a state election in Germany since the Second World War. Why is this happening now? Well, there's lots of different reasons. Some are short-term, some are much longer-term. Um, the most obvious reasons are to do with Ukraine, Many in Eastern Germany are deeply unhappy with the way the German government has dealt with the issue of Ukraine. They are arguably a little bit more sympathetic towards Russia than uh, those in Western Germany. There's a, a lot of unhappiness to do with the current federal government and all three parties in the federal government performed abysmally in uh, these two states elections. Much longer term, there's dissatisfaction with um, the fallout from German unification, which is now well over 30 years ago. Um, but many in the East feel deeply unhappy with the way that um, unification has developed. It's not that they want to go back to the GDR, but they don't want to protest about some of the things that they feel have been uh, uh, have ended up with them getting the thin end of the wedge. So why so, why so much anger at the current German government beyond the, the war in Ukraine? Well, the current German government is is very new in the sense that it's three parties and German governments have not in the past been three parties working together. They've been two parties. And on the face of it, you might think, well, you know, one extra party might not make that much difference. But the present German government has been very, very ineffective at getting more or less anything done. And Germans are very unhappy with public services. Uh, they're very unhappy with um, the, 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 the way that uh, money is spent or not spent in Germany. There's a real issue with the budget. There's a gaping hole uh, this, that, that the German uh, government has not been able to fill. And whatever the German government has tried to do, it's either failed or it's never even got off the ground in trying to achieve these things. So many in the East feel that it's, it's just not been effective at getting anything done and it's even made uh, things worse. So 
32 percent of the vote going to a party, the AFD, that is considered in the state of Thuringia an extremist organization by German domestic intelligence. What is the chance of this party actually governing there in Thuringia? Uh, very slim, very slim indeed, because the other parties are not going to touch it. Um, and despite what people like Björn Höcker might claim, um, that they can make all the offers they like. Uh, the, the other parties are not going to go anywhere near it. And the AFD guys are well aware of that. The problem for all of the other parties is that there is not really any other coalitions that, that naturally look like they might work. There's an awful lot of slaughtered cows going to have to be, uh, you know, ha 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 have to be out there if any coalition is going to come together in Turing, uh, in Thuringen at all. So there's a real problem. Uh, no one wants to work with the AFD, but no one has any real viable alternative to get a government together. So, so that means we've got, you know, we, we, we've got a real problem. Dan Huff, he's a professor of politics at the University of Sussex. Thank you. My pleasure. Björn Höcke, the leader of the far-right alternative for Germany in the state of Thuringia, says he wants to head up a coalition government in the state. We are ready to take on the responsibility of forming a government. It's parliamentary tradition here in Germany that the strongest party invites others to talks. In the coming week, we'll hold talks in the party committees, we'll analyse the situation, and then we'll decide to whom we'll present the offers of talks. Our correspondent Matthew Moore is in the state parliament of, the, of Thuringia. Matthew, good to see you. The leader of the far right there says he wants to govern. Is he going to be able to? going to be very difficult, Jared, not least because he is the leader of a party which the mainstream political establishment in Germany has said that they will not work with. They formed a brand mauer, as you say in German, a firewall around this party, said that they will not work with them because they consider them to be extremists and basically anti-democratic. That's going to make it very, very difficult for Björn Hooker to form a coalition. Now, he said tonight... As we heard, he said to the other parties to come and, and, and sit down with him and negotiate. And he's warned them not to ignore the AFD. And that's a warning that he can actually now use. The other parties are really going to have to crack their heads together and see if they can overcome the differences that they have. A lot of them really deep lying differences over big issues. So can Björn Hooka form a, a government? I, I think it's going to be incredibly difficult at this stage. But it's interesting that distinction you make too, Matthew, because even if they can't govern, they still will be able to wield significant influence. Now, where you were, there was a protest earlier. How have people been reacting to this news there? Mm. There was, uh, I guess, dejection um, from the evening, but even before the results came out, Jared, people have been expecting this for a, for a long time. You know, people are saying, not really shocked, we have no illusions, we know the far right are on, are on the march here. However, they said that it was important to come together and to show that there is a kind of peaceful, there is a, a pro-democracy, there is an anti-far right majority in this state. And that's worth bearing in mind, even as we sit here on this historic moment, as a milestone moment in the, in the, in the rise of the far right in Germany, that... 70% or so of voters around that st voted for other parties. Um, and what makes the AFD so, so kind of strong is the fact that Germany has a very fragmented multi-party system. Now, well, the mood out here tonight is one basically that we're in a turning point, that people need to wake up. And, and that's what I kind of heard from people directly who were just saying, you know, that the, the only hope they have now is that people, uh, uh, political leaders here in Thuringia and across Germany really stick to their promises to have this firewall in place. And that firewall is this, this, this refusal to cooperate and do any sort of business on a state level or a national level with the far right alternative for Germany party. And we'll see now how, 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 how strong that firewall really is in the coming weeks and months. Matthew, you've been travelling right across the region in recent weeks. Tell us, what have voters' main concerns been as they've been speaking to you ahead of these elections? So on the one hand, you have huge concerns about what the far-right AFD coming top in their state actually means, what it means for the story that they're telling themselves about the Germany they live in. Well, this moment is really a moment to reckon with because, you know, Germany has, has done a lot of work, painstaking work in, in decades since the Second World War to really overcome its past. And this is like, it's, it's seen as, for many democratic Germans, as a moment where they think, what is going on in my country? On the other hand, you've got 
people who are supportive of the AFD, who are supporting parties, who are on the extreme, the populist left, who are saying that the country is going in completely the wrong direction, that the federal government in Berlin, which is run by a coalition of parties, that they're basically, they've got their heads in the sand about the problems that Germany faces, that they're, they're dragging Germany into a war that involves Russia and Ukraine, and that's not in Germany's interest. Then you've got the, the, this underlying issue of migration here. Now, Germany's a massive country, 80 million people, and the numbers of migrants, uh, irregular migrants arriving here every year are really quite small in comparison, but still, the, the issue has massive cut through. When you ask Germans what they care about, migration is right up there. And this was a regional election, Jared. We're talking about regional elections to deal with local issues. And the big issues on the campaign are peace, migration. So issues that are really kind of geopolitical, national picture, and that's just fed through. And what it's resulted in tonight is this historic result where the AFD have basically managed to ride this wave of, of upset and anger and frustration and take it to, to, to the top position. As I say, we don't know yet whether the AFD will actually manage to, to form a government. That's our political correspondent Matthew Moore in, the, in Thuringia uh, speaking to us about the election results there. Matthew, thank you. Let's go over to Saxony now, the neighbouring state, and look at the expected results there. Projections are indicating a slight lead for the Conservative Christian Democrats or CDU. Right now, the CDU is in a governing coalition with the Greens and the centre-left Social Democrats. Let's look at these projections. They've got the CDU on track to win almost 32% of the vote. They're followed just behind by the AFD on 30.8%. The newcomer BSW, Sarah Wagen, Knecht Alliance is in third place, taking some 12%. Chancellor Olaf Scholz of Social Democrats, the SPD, they're in fourth with 7.3%, followed by the Greens with just over 5% of the votes. Now, Michel Kretschmer is the leader of the CDU in the state of Saxony. He's also the current Premier there. He thanked party workers and supporters a short time ago. I think, dear friends, that we have every reason to celebrate. Five hard years are now behind us. National elections, European elections are behind us. We all know how disappointed people are with what's happening in Berlin. And the people here in Saxony trusted us. They didn't cast a protest vote. Instead, they gave us this strong result with their support. Congratulations and thank you very much for making it happen. Michelle Kretschmer there. Let's cross now to DW political correspondent Julia Saudelli in Dresden, who was at the AFD election party a little bit earlier. Now, Julia, the AFD is projected to come second in Saxony, which is their best ever result there. What's been the reaction among uh, the party there? Well, we saw earlier some reactions of satisfaction, some reactions of joy, because... Uh, this is a good result for the AFD. They have gained uh, gained votes compared to uh, f the election, state election here five years ago, uh, and they have come in a second again. And they've gotten closer and closer to the CDU that is ahead of them uh, at the moment. Projects projections showing just a one percent difference between the two parties. There was a bit of hidden disappointment, I would say, because I think there was hope that the AFD would also be able to maybe come in first here in Saxony. And that would have been a really a groundbreaking result because it was really a neck and neck race with the CDU. Uh, some were still hoping that this might happen as the votes kept coming in and keep coming in uh, during the evening. There was also some uh, rejoicing and celebration when uh, members of the AFD saw other parties who uh, they really don't like who they see, some of them see as their main enemies, for, for example, the Greens not performing particularly well. But there were also uh, people considering what kind of consequences uh, this result may have at the national level. And we can take a listen. We asked some people there uh, what they thought about this issue. Well, with the results as there are, there should actually be consequences at the federal level. But since we know that these are all ministers who are glued to their chairs, nothing's likely to happen. The federal government must also take into account what's happening in the regional states and how people have become tired of politics. And of course, this must have consequences. We've done well. 
and the AFD is actually a very good party. And all this bad talk before the election, that's not right. I think the AFD has potential for the future, for the children and in general. Back to Julia Saldelli in Dresden. Julia, as we just heard, AFD members demanding consequences on the national level. Do you think that the result for the AFD, not only in Saxony but Thuringia too, is, is also a wake-up call for the federal government in Berlin? I think in some way it is, but I think the biggest wake-up call is actually the very bad results that the three parties that are at, in the coalition government in Berlin at the federal level uh, gained in, in these two uh, elections. The uh, liberal FDP is out of the... Both parliaments had terrible results. The Green are now out of the parliament in, in Thuringia and barely made it into Saxony. So clearly there is a big dissatisfaction with the government in Berlin, something that the AFD has, has banked on has played on to to get the results that they got here and uh, we have to keep in mind there is still one uh, state election happening in about three weeks in Brandenburg also in eastern Germany and once that happens and plays out uh, there might uh, be some consequences also that the coalition government in Berlin is going to have to draw from these results. Julia, as we've been hearing, no one really wants to form a coalition with the AFD but can a party that wins so many votes be ignored? Yeah, well, they uh, they have about one third of uh, of the parliament, and uh, that is n doesn't seem to be enough for them to take on the role of uh, what is known um, as um, uh, the blocking minority. Once uh, uh, the uh, one party controls, even if it's in the opposition, one third of the votes, they can block uh, a lot of de decisions that require a two third uh, majority in the state parliament. Now, that doesn't seem to be the case according to the projections. But uh, the party will still have a lot of influence. And we've heard uh, from people at the, at the party, uh, at the election party of the AFD, questioning why the other parties don't want to go into a coalition with them. One woman told me that she thought actually the CDU, the conservative CDU and the AFD could work very well together. Uh, but basically the result now is that there isn't really a coalition that can, can find a, a good majority uh, without the AFD. And the parties, again, are trying to keep that firewall up and not wanting uh, to involve the AFD in a coalition. But it's going to be really hard to uh, try to form a, a government here in Saxony. That's DW political correspondent Julia Saudelli in Dresden for us. Julia, thank you. And I'm joined in the studio by Richard Walker, our chief international editor. Richard, hi. A, a projected win for the far right in Thuringia. This would be the first time a, a far right party has won the most seats in a German state parliament since the Second World War. What does this mean for Germany? Yeah, well, I think it's a kind of shock to the system, Jared. I mean, the, there is the, the sense of a, of a historical Rubicon being crossed here. Um, as you say, that the, this has not happened since the end, the, the end of the Second World War, that a far-right party uh, comes first in a regional election. And it's just the latest in what seems like a kind of a series of milestones that this party has managed to achieve over the years. It's only been around since the year 2013, so it's only just over a decade. But it's, it's really kind of taken milestone after milestone, getting steadily larger on the national level. Um, just recently, er earlier in the summer, coming second in the European elections, and this was seen as part of a bit of a sweep in many European countries also with far-right parties go going so far. Um, and now coming first in, in, an, in a state, in this state of Thuringia. And I think what kind of sets apart the far right in Germany from the far right in other European countries is, of course, the, the historical legacy that Germany has uh, of Nazism that caused the Holocaust that set off the Second World War, the you know, absolute devastation in Germany and across uh, the European continent, um, that, that really lurching far to the right has long been a, a serious taboo. Um, and with each of these milestones being taken by the AFD, people are wondering, 
okay, you know, is this taboo really seriously being undermined and, and how far could it go? Is this, you know, are there many more milestones to come? So I think a lot of people in Germany are, are going to be concerned about that tonight. When we look at these milestones that you've outlined <coughs> over the past, I, I guess, 11 years or so, uh, for people who are watching, and, and you've talked about this tra trajectory, can it mean that the AFD will govern given what we've seen, particularly in Thuringia today? That, that's very unlikely. So um, in Germany, you have a pretty fragmented political landscape, uh, which means that parties need coalition partners to be able to get a majority in their respective parliaments, whether it's on a regional basis or on a national basis. Um, the AFD around the 30 to 33 percent kind of market in Thuringia, um, it would need coalition partners to form a government. And all of the other parties have said, we're not going into coalition with you. Uh, we think you'll be on the pale. We think that you're anti-democratic and that's not going to happen. Um, and it I think it's most likely that that firewall, as they often called it, call it, will hold at this point, um, and that other parties will form coalitions to create a government. But what's possible is that you will start to see this firewall being chipped away at. Um, you know, some parties say, well, you know, if the AFD come up with a proposal in the regional parliament and we think it's sensible, then we'll vote with it rather than just object to it simply because they brought it along. That would be the sort of thing that could come along. You might also see a debate emerging with the, within the mainstream conservatives, uh, which you've seen first inklings of already, of saying, well, you know, they're on the center, you know, we're on the center right, they're a bit further to the right, can't we cooperate on some things? So, so that's, I think, something that we'll have to watch in the months and years ahead to see whether this taboo, this firewall, uh, really does start to, to kind of break apart. Richard, let's talk about a, another party, a, a brand new populist party that's performed very well in these elections. It's called the Sarah Wagenknecht Alliance. Yeah. Why does this party uh, appeal to so many voters? It appears it's come third in, in Thuringia and Saxony. Yeah, and I mean, what's really striking about this party is that it didn't exist just a few months ago. Um, it's emerged um, as part of a split from the left party, which is on the sort of far left of German politics and is also partly one of the inheritors of, of the, the former communists that used to rule in Eastern Germany. Um, and this very charismatic leader from that party split away from the left party, saying that she felt that it had gone too far down the kind of identity politics, you know, saying, you know, this is all about wokery, you know, right. stuff like that, and saying that she wanted to kind of redefine a new kind of left-wing politics, which is kind of anti-capitalist and left-wing in terms of economics, but in terms of some um, social and societal issues is more conventionally right-wing, so like a more right-wing attitude towards migration, um, and also having a, a strong uh, attitude against Germany's support of Ukraine in, in the war that's ongoing or Russia's invasion of Ukraine. And that's where her party then overlaps with the AFD because that also um, has very much that attitude. So, so this party is really kind of, it, it's come out of pretty much nothing. It's got a charismatic leader. Um, and I think it, it really appeals to a lot of people who think they want to shake up the system. They're unsatisfied, dissatisfied with the way that German politics is going but they don't necessarily want to go the whole hog to the AFD, which you know a lot of people have, have issues with, and this party has provided a home for them. We don't know what kind of potential this party has in Western Germany. It's very much rooted in Eastern Germany so far, at least the support that we're seeing for it. But it's just another sign of how kind of turbulent the, the German political scene is right now. Mm, that's our chief international editor, Richard Walker. Richard, thank you very much for that analysis.